One of the legendary rivers on Earth is the Euphrates River. Since the dawn of time, this body of water has left an impression on humanity because of its immense size and contribution to powerful ancient civilizations like Babylonia and Mesopotamia. However, recently, the Euphrates River started drying up, leaving scientists and researchers with lots of questions. Something seems to be hidden underneath the drying river, something terrifying for all humankind. Join us in this video as we explore the hidden reasons behind the water reduction, the crazy politics and end-of-the-world prophecy concerning the river Euphrates, and of course, the terrifying new discoveries from this drying river. The Euphrates River spans from Turkey to Syria and Iraq. The Euphrates stretches a distance of over 1,730 miles. It originates from the Armenian mountains in eastern Turkey and flows through steep gorges and canyons in Turkey, then through lowlands in Syria before entering the Persian Gulf. It is the longest river in Asia. The only other river similar to the Euphrates in age and purpose is the River Tigris. For a long time, this stretch of river has been the major source of water supply for the people living in that region. Researchers believe the river is at least 10,000 years old, but biblical records show it may be even older. According to the Christian Bible, the Euphrates River is one of the four rivers that flowed through the Garden of Eden, where creation began. From biblical records, we learn that River Euphrates served as a key dividing barrier between East and West Eden. So if we're to follow the story of creation as depicted by the Bible, this river is as old as time. Besides biblical history, science proves that the Euphrates River dates as far back as over 450,000 years ago. This is because some stone artifacts and remains of early Homo erectus have been found buried in this river. The Euphrates River also holds a special place in human history due to its role in creating the Fertile Crescent. According to history, the Fertile Crescent is where agricultural practices began before spreading to the rest of the world. Without the Euphrates River, that part of Mesopotamia would not have earned the name Fertile Crescent. The river provided a continuous supply of clean water for humans of that period to practice their agricultural activities maximally. Even ancient Babylon would never have become so powerful without the Euphrates. Archaeological records show that the Babylonians built structures in and around the Euphrates River for better manipulation and consumption. What is referred to today as Mesopotamia is actually the area of land where ancient Babylonians and Assyrians built their empire. But now, this legendary river is drying up. There's a significant drop in water levels across the length of the Euphrates. Some regions in the lower part of the river are completely dried up, with the cracked riverbed completely visible. Due to these recent developments, farmlands have become barren, and the fishing economies of these locations are now dead, as whatever small pools of water are left contaminated or undrinkable, the once fertile crescent that gave birth to the world's agriculture is now a desolate land. The river used to be so great that you could even see it from space, but now it's practically unrecognizable even at close range. This begs the question, what caused this once powerful flowing river to start drying up suddenly, and what will be the after effects of this drought? Well, as shocking as the Euphrates drying status seems, it wasn't entirely unexpected. You see, two notable things spelled the incoming disaster for the Euphrates, the crazy water politics and the biblical prophecy. The Euphrates River is a major contributor to the successful economies of Turkey, Syria, and Iraq. For as long as we know, each country has been tapping into the river's resources for agriculture and hydroelectric power. As a result, all three countries have had numerous clashes in the past regarding the consumption and control of the Euphrates, Turkey has always had the most control over the river since it originates from the Armenian mountains in East Turkey. This is why as far back as World War I, when the borders in and around the region were made, these three nations surrounding the Euphrates signed a treaty. The treaty stipulated how each nation would utilize the water so that all three countries would still benefit maximally. This treaty was made to regulate or minimize any future dams or hydraulic installations that any of these nations would mount across the river to generate hydroelectricity. Turkey was one of the first of these three countries to build a considerable number of dams on the Euphrates. 
This significantly affected the flow of water into Syria and Iraq. And so, in 1946, they agreed that Turkey would report any significant changes or constructions on the Euphrates River. This agreement also allowed Iraq to construct its own dams on Turkish territory, so they too could utilize a fair share of the river. However, Turkey's dams and reservoirs collected so much water that there was a significant reduction in the river's flow to Iraq. Iraq, which experienced over 15 cubic kilometers of water flow in 1973, received only 9 cubic kilometers in 1975. Iraq was greatly upset by this recent development and threatened to bomb some dams in Turkey. But following a series of negotiations, the three nations agreed, and the dams were opened to release water and thus increase the flow of the Euphrates River to Iraq. Still, Iraq was unhappy that it was always getting the leftovers of this river. Another bilateral agreement in 1989 led to a consensus between Syria and Iraq in which Syria agreed to always release 60% of the flowing water it received from Turkey into Iraq. This agreement brought peace, and there was no significant disagreement between the three nations over water rationing for over 20 years. However, trouble started again when Turkey rolled out the GAP project. The GAP project angered Iraq. You see, amongst the three nations, Iraq has the least number of dams. Syria has over six major dams on the Euphrates alone. Turkey has more than 22 dams and hydroelectric power plants along the Euphrates and Tigris rivers. On the other hand, Iraq has only two dams on the Euphrates, and both are in poor condition, as they were built in the late 1980s. Besides, these dams don't get much water since most water flow is already collected at Turkish and Syrian dams. Syria, on its own, has the Tabqa Dam, the country's largest reservoir. Over 500,000 hectares of farmlands depend on the dam for irrigation and drinking water. Besides the Tabqa Dam, Syria and Turkey have smaller dams on the tributaries and streams connected to the Euphrates, further collecting water for use, much to the detriment of Iraq. Turkey's GAP project was launched to harness River Euphrates for irrigation and hydroelectricity production for its southeastern provinces. The project supplies over 10 million people. It's estimated to provide irrigation water to about 1 million hectares of agricultural land in the Euphrates Basin. This makes up more than 20% of all the irrigable land in Turkey. The GAP project was a significant win for the Turkish people. The phenomenal dam can hold over 90% of the total water of the Euphrates River. As impressive as this is, it's a selfish move by Turkey. For one, it was a total breach of the treaty and it spelled outright doom for Iraq, which was barely surviving on leftovers. Sometime in April 2014, the Euphrates' water flow into Syria was cut off almost completely, so much that the river barely exceeded the Turkish-Syrian border. Turkey's action clearly violated the agreement it signed in 1987, where it committed to releasing at least 500 cubic meters of water per second to the Syrians. Besides the crazy water politics, Another reason the Euphrates is drying, in addition to excessive consumption, is evaporation due to high temperatures. Global warming has been affecting so many areas worldwide and causing significant river evaporation. However, creating several reservoirs and lakes on the Euphrates River seems to have made things worse. Large lakes and reservoirs have very wide surface areas. In high temperature regions like Turkey, Iraq, and Syria, these lakes and reservoirs will experience increased evaporation, leading to more unnecessary water loss. A recent study of the annual evaporation of reservoirs in the regions around the Euphrates showed that Turkey experiences an estimated 2 cubic kilometers of evaporation annually, Syria experiences 1 cubic kilometer, and Iraq over 5 cubic kilometers annually. Besides poor management of the water body and global warming, Many people have identified another factor they believe could explain why the Euphrates River is drying up so fast. It's an ancient biblical prophecy, an end of the world sign. The Bible tells us an interesting but shocking prophecy in the book of Revelations about the drying up of the Euphrates River. According to Revelation 6 verse 12, which reads, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water therefore was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. 
This Bible passage clearly predicts that the Euphrates River would dry up, but then it says it'll dry up to prepare the way for the kings of the east. Who are these kings of the east? Well, the Bible doesn't say. It's another Bible mystery. But theologians have said that this king of the east is Christ, and the drying up of this river is one of the things that must happen to mark his second coming. Although there are plausible reasons why the river Euphrates is in its current predicament, we can't help but admit that its rapid disappearance has been somewhat mysterious. Research has proven that the waters of the Euphrates River have dried up at a much faster pace than has ever been recorded. Right now, even if Turkey and Syria were to empty all their dams back into the Euphrates River, it still won't recover its former glory. In fact, the scorched and dried up riverbeds may suck up all the water. So it could very well be that some supernatural forces are at play here, causing the Euphrates to dry up. But here's the thing. If truly the Euphrates River drying up was caused by supernatural forces in fulfillment of this biblical prophecy, then it marks the emergence of something terrifying, something that could very much bring destruction to humanity. The Terror Beneath the Euphrates Underneath the once great river Euphrates, the Christian Bible tells us the presence of something evil. Let's hear it directly as stated in the book of Revelations, chapter 9, verses 13 to 15. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. This verse clearly shows that there were angels hidden and chained beneath the river Euphrates all along, waiting for a particular time when they'll be released to torment humankind for one month, one day, and one hour. That's about 745 hours. This portion of the Bible was never given much attention before, not until the Euphrates started drying up rapidly. And now it leaves us wondering, just what kind of torment will be so bad enough to wipe out one-third of all the people on Earth? If you're into mystical beings and supernatural things, you probably know what angels are and what they look like. Most comics depict angels as beautiful beings with two wings. However, this is just a general description. Angels are of different ranks and take different forms. Moreover, the ones depicted in comics and movies are usually the good ones, nothing like the ones the Bible refers to in this passage. You see, this passage talks about fallen angels. The fallen angels are those angels that joined Satan in rebelling against God, but were defeated and cast down into the earth. Although most of them roam free, the Bible clearly states that these four were chained down. Though we weren't told the names or power levels of these beings, we can guess that they are very dangerous because their allotted time, according to the prophecy, will be just about 700 hours. Yet in this short time, they'll wipe off one-third of humanity. If these beings weren't chained all this while, humanity might have been wiped out long ago. Now, as the river begins to dry, it is almost certain that the angel of God will loose these fallen angels upon the earth to wreak havoc. In case you are still in doubt and see all this as mere superstition, know that some terrifying things have been discovered lately beneath the dried up areas of the Euphrates. First, it's the tunnels. No one ever thought there were tunnels underneath the Euphrates until the river started drying up and revealed several tunnels. Theories have emerged that these tunnels were built by ancient Babylonia and served as the means by which they traveled across provinces underground. However, there are not too many historical records to back this claim. This is why a greater percentage of people believe that these tunnels actually lead to the very chambers where the fallen angels are chained. The majority of people in the area who have ventured into these previously inaccessible parts of the Euphrates have observed these caves and caverns are in strange shapes, different from any caves anywhere else in the world. They believe that humans couldn't have constructed them. Some caves are even said to bear a striking similarity to prison bars, but that's not all. In addition to these weirdly shaped caves, several archaeologists and even common people have reported hearing eerie sounds from deep within the caves. Several recordings of these terrifying noises are on social media. They'll make your skin crawl. And from witnesses, sometimes these sounds seem like groans or howls from a creature. 
Some witnesses even stated that they've heard what could be likened to moving chains from under the area. All this evidence points to one fact. We might be on the verge of great destruction. The Bible didn't say how these angels would persecute humanity. But from what we know about these beings, they are really powerful and can cause severe global pandemics or planetary disasters that could kill millions of people. All this is in addition to the threat of desertification already facing Syria and its surrounding regions. And so, even if the world survives the incoming doom, the chances of Syria surviving with a barren land are quite slim. Thanks for watching, and make sure to click the video on your screen for our next episode. I'll see you there.